Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to a new update by RRG Research for Monday the 14th of August uh, and I'm recording this on Friday the 11th of August before the European markets are open. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I am presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. As usual, let's kick off this show with uh, a look at the rotation of various stock market indices around the world. And here is the weekly RRG, which shows a transition of movement. So a rotation out of the markets that have been leading over the last few months into markets that have been lagging. You can see all these tails picking up inside the lagging quadrant and you can see how the uh, markets that are on the right hand side of the graph have lost relative momentum and they're now all moving downward towards the weakening quadrant. The big picture is still for those markets on the right hand side to be relatively stronger than the ones on the left hand side. So for the time being this is still a momentum based transition um, which uh, could very well um, end up in a rotation on the right hand side for these strong markets and a rotation on the left hand side for these weak markets. Only time will tell. <clears throat> An interesting development is the rotation for the Dow Jones index which is actually doing very well at a nice RRG heading inside the improving quadrant especially when you compare it with the other US based indexes like the S&P and the Nasdaq index. If we look at the same set of markets on a week on a daily scale, sorry, then you will see that things are getting a little bit more fuzzy. Um, it's this is not a very clear picture. These these tails are all over the place, um, and it sort of points to indecisiveness. Um, and I think that's exactly what the markets are telling us for the last week. If you look at the movements over the last week, it was. A percent up, one and a half percent down, one and a half percent up. It was a pretty volatile week. A couple of uh, macroeconomic figures came out. Market didn't really take any very clear direction yet. Maybe that'll happen next week, but it certainly didn't come last week. So I'm going to hold on to this longer term rotational picture for these world stock markets, um, which is in, in fact still in favor of these New York FANG, <clears throat> NASDAQ, Nikkei, S&P, Nifty indexes and now Dow Jones seems to be coming. Um, so I'm going to keep an eye on these rotations. Only when these tails are starting to pick up again, so the, the ones in green are starting to pick up inside weakening and rotate back up towards uh, leading and the opposite rotation happens uh, on the left hand side then we will know that these markets are still leading. If the rotation continues in the direction that they are, then you will see a shift more towards like Hang Seng, FTSE, Australia, um, the DAX maybe. But all in all, uh, especially the shorter term picture shows a bit of um, fuzziness in the stock markets around the world. And it becomes very clear when we change the benchmark to a 0% return, looking at it from a pure price perspective. And what we then see is that all these markets are going through a corrective mode. The center of the chart here is 0% return. So these are now all um, uh, price trends instead of relative trends. And you can see that they're all moving towards the lagging quadrant. So all these markets are going through a correction in terms of price. If we take a look at the uh, S&P, always interesting, then you can see that we broke that rising trend line and we're now resting on a horizontal support level. Former resistance, now support around 44.50. And especially Thursday's can uh, candle, so bar here, you can see how um, we opened higher, we had a pretty good day, and then towards the close, we sold off. Uh, we barely held on above 44.50. So if that gives way uh, either Friday um, or in the coming week, then that'll very likely going to put more pressure on the development of the S&P 500. So please keep an eye on 44, well, let's say 44.55 on the downside for the S&P 500. Upside, um, 
4530 but as you can see it's it's a little bit more cluttered with resistance so for the time being with this lower highs lower lows uh, image in place uh, I think that the risk is very clearly to the downside here you see how relative strength is picking up and that only means that relative strength is picking up versus in this case the Acqui index that's the MSCI world it doesn't necessarily mean that it will also go up in price that's a very distinct um, uh, difference between relative, relative strength analysis and price analysis. If we look at the Hang Seng index and it's moving sideways and it's going the opposite direction, the reason I'm, I'm picking up the Hang Seng index because you can see how this is also probably more at risk of a further decline than it is for a rally, but you can see how the RRG lines, the relative strength matrix, are rolling over um, where we see rolling up in the S&P 500. Both charts in terms of price probably more at risk for a decline than a rally in terms of price. The Nifty is interesting because it's still holding up above its rising trend line and you can see how the ROG lines are starting to, um, to move back up higher. The RS Momentum line is already above 100 so that's putting the, um, the Nifty index inside the improving quadrant very likely to move higher so as long as the nifty holds up above that rising trend line then um, it's very likely that we will get an end of this small downtrend and a nifty will be one of the stronger markets in terms of international indexes i haven't shown or talked about the chart of the u.s sectors for quite a while with you guys and and i want to bring it on right now so this is the rrg uh, the weekly rrg for u.s sectors and what you can see here is it looks a little bit like what we saw in the world indexes. Um, a select group on the right hand side, select group on the left hand side, and they're moving in opposite directions in terms of uh, relative momentum on the JDK RS momentum scale. So discretionary communication services technology, we all know these were the sectors that have been leading the market higher over the last few months they are now losing strength. These tails are pointing lower and that means that money is rotating out of these sectors. Now where is it going? Pretty much to all the stuff on the left hand side. Um, the further to the left the weaker it is, the further to the right the stronger it is. So the two sectors that I really um, am keeping an eye on are especially industrials and materials. Financial is picking up really nicely and so is energy but they're still lower on the RS ratio scale. So um, industrials looking really good from a relative perspective and in terms of um, offsetting trade, so overweighting, underweighting in terms of sector allocation or pair trading, if you were just gonna play long and short, then I think there is an opportunity um, uh, to offset XLI, the industrials ETF, versus XLK, the uh, technology ETF, because you can see how they are on very nice opposite rotational patterns. And the reason I'm picking XLI and not, for example, XLB and XLF and XLE uh, is because XLI is the sector that broke to new all-time highs and is still holding up very well above that previous resistance level. Let's take a look at the individual charts here. So here is XLI and here you can see that break to new all-time highs and despite the fact that there is a bit of a rollover very recently and it, you might even argue that we are uh, in for a bit more of a correction, especially when you look at the RSI, you can see how that has built up a bit of negative divergence and the MACD is rolling over. But the, the, the strength is in the relative, on a relative basis. On a relative basis, that this sector has started to curl back up and is actually holding up very well above that former resistance level that should now start to act as support. So that's around 107.50. And if you compare that with the technology sector, XLK, which also tried to move to new all-time highs, it actually moved to new all-time highs, but it came back. And when, it, when a sector or, or you know, no matter what, any security that breaks to a new all-time high, and it's not able to hold above that level, that's actually a sign of weakness. And that's exactly what happened in the technology sector. You can see how it took out that, that overhead resistance, all-time high levels. We rallied, we kind of tested it as support, even dipped below it. And now we seriously dipped below it and we're at the next support level around 167. 
This is not a very strong chart in terms of price, but look at the relative, how this is actually uh, moved lower in terms of relative strength as well. Um, so if you want to play some, some uh, offsets or overweight, underweight, the industrial sector and the technology sector are actually uh, pretty good candidates for that. If we take a look at the New York FANG index, uh, as we usually do, and just to not make this video too super long and go over too many individual stocks, I have looked for stocks that are sort of confirming each other on both the weekly and the daily New York FANG um, RRG. And this is the weekly RRG and the tales that I really like here are Netflix and Amazon because they're inside the improving quadrant but at a very strong RRG heading. And the ones that I don't like are AMD which has moved from weakening into lagging and you can see how Nvidia actually hooked back down from leading back into weakening and it's heading in at a negative RRG heading. If you now bring in the daily RRG for this universe, then you can see how Netflix is actually moving in the same direction and how Amazon is actually already powered into the leading quadrant. So these two daily tails for Netflix and Amazon are absolutely confirming the strength that we're seeing here where they are still inside the improving quadrant. So the daily tails for New York Fang are absolutely confirming the strength that's building up on the weekly RRG. Now on the opposite side, we had AMD and Nvidia. And Nvidia is very clearly also here inside the weakening quadrant, very rapidly moving towards lagging at a negative RRG heading. So that is certainly confirming the hook that you saw on the weekly RRG. And AMD, to a lesser degree, it's inside the green leading quadrant, it's coming out of improving, but you can see that the, the heading is already lower. So it's just about to rotate into the leading quadrant, but it's already in a negative heading. And that is pretty much in line with what's happening here on that weekly RRG. So AMD and Nvidia are actually at a negative heading on both the weekly and the daily. And we see um, Netflix and Amazon uh, rotating in the opposite direction. If we look at the individual charts for these stocks, now let's start with Netflix and you can see how that is holding up nicely above its breakout level. But the most important thing is the relative strength um, uh, versus um, the New York FANG index and it's actually starting to move higher. And despite the fact that we, you could actually see um, a head and shoulders type pattern here uh, in, this, in this chart, which would mean that a break below 410 would be a negative sign, but it's especially the relative strength that is encouraging for Netflix to move higher, to potentially move higher, I should say. When we move to Amazon, also at a nice strong RRG heading, then you can see how the RRG lines are rapidly rising uh, above the 100 level, level, giving Amazon that nice push into the leading quadrant. And you can see where it's coming from, that gap that pushed Amazon above that former high. It's now testing, or it tested, the next resistance level around 145. And it's now coming back and testing the former resistance as support. So especially when, we, when we're able to hold up, uh, let's say above 137, uh, that would be really good. But we could even go into the gap area or be caught by that rising support line. Um, all in all, it looks like Amazon will be one of the leading sectors inside the New York FANG index. And mind you, again, I can't stress it enough, this is all based on relative strength. Um, these lines can go up while the price of Amazon is going down. And the only thing that tells you is that Amazon will be going down less fast than the New York FANG index or any of its components. So please keep that in mind. When you do relative strength analysis, it doesn't necessarily mean that it will go up in price. Um, the benefit is that it's gonna be very helpful to uh, find pair trades or over underweights in your portfolio. On the opposite side, in the negative rotations, we had Nvidia. Um, and this picture is starting to, uh, to build up here. You can see uh, last week we just broke out of that 
little rising channel. We were testing the former rising support as resistance. So we got a new lower high coming in. Then we broke be below the previous low. So that series of lower highs and lower lows is now really starting to take shape. Um, and the, net, the first level of support is probably around 401. More importantly, the ROG lines are really rolling over right now and suggesting that there is more relative weakness ahead for NVIDIA, which could push it into the lagging quadrant on that daily ROG as you saw it. And finally, we've got AMD, um, which is inside something that could be labeled as a, um, a descending triangle where the, low, where the highs are coming in at lower levels each time and the um, lows are at a horizontal level. So there is, there is continuous support or has been continuous support around 107.5. Um, that is still keeping the market higher, but sellers are willing to um, sell at a lower price, um, uh, as you can see from these lower highs coming in. And that's causing that triangle to, um, to, to move to its apex um, for a, for a good signal, it should break out roughly around two thirds of the formation, which is measured from the first highs, so roughly around here. So about next week, a break lower would execute a descending trial triangle, uh, and that would accelerate the move lower. There is a bit of support left around 103. If you look at the uh, lows here that were set in 2022, and then we got a couple of highs here, we tested here again. Um, so there's two support levels to watch for AMD and the first one being 107, 107 and a half and the second one around 103. If we move lower, then it's going to very likely going to accelerate much lower. The ROG lines are indicating at least relative weakness within the New York FANG um, universe. I am going to leave it at this for this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you for watching. Uh, and I hope to see you again at a new update by RRG Research next week, same time, same place.